Hello everyone, welcome to the training session show editor today. We'll have a look at the laser show control software show editor and uh, learn a bit about the basics, how show editor works, how you can use it for your show, how you can customize it and get going quickly. So first of all, uh, I want to invite everybody to pose your questions to the chat, write the questions you have to the chat. Also, if questions come up during the session, feel free to write them to the chat and I will have a look and try to answer every question that comes up. Please keep in mind that this is a basic training, so in-depth questions for really advanced features uh, probably will be dealt with in a future session. That is more for advanced users. But this time we keep to the basics, so you then after the session should be able to get going, to get output from the laser, should be able to project some content, create own content and use that for your show. Let's have a look if there are any questions already pending. No questions pending, so I just start over and uh, yeah, get going. First of all, Show Editor, the software is bundled to the ShowNet main board mainly. There is older versions of Show Editor available in the market that have different licensing, uh, but the current licensing for Show Editor is bundled to the ShowNet hardware. The ShowNet hardware can be an integrated main board to the laser, which is the most common thing. Most of the lasers uh, from LaserWorld Tarm RTI have that as a mainboard built in, so you don't need any extra hardware, external hardware. But of course, uh, the ShowNet is also available as external hardware device if you do not have it as mainboard or if you want to use it as ILDA source. So different, uh, different hardware aspects, but the software license is built in to all these ShowNet devices, no matter if it's an integrated or an external hardware part. So what happens from the licensing side, as soon as a hardware is connected with the license, so it's a ShowNet connected and you open Show Editor, the hardware will automatically be detected and the license as well. So you have full output functionality of Show Editor. If you do not have connected a hardware, you can still use Show Editor in the free mode. So you have basically most of the features available, including the export of ILDA files, um, but um, you just cannot output because there is no output hardware connected. But this is something we will see later. Let's start over. Um, we just start with starting Show Editor software software where loads and it does all the connectivity stuff happening here and you see that pretty pretty soon you will see that show editor consists of several windows this is an advantage as you can place it on different areas you have you can use it on several screens you can distribute it as you like and uh, these windows they serve different purposes now let's wait for show editor to start up and as you see, there is no kind of error message coming up because there is a laser connected and it's detected automatically. So what we see here is a startup screen. So you can already decide which part of the software you want to use from the startup screen. The figure editor is the core part of show editor. So it's the most important part. This is where you create the content. Then we have live show, which is the live part of show editor. And there you can live control the content you have created. This is a quite common use uh, because for wedding receptions, for, for nightclubs, for, for small mobile DJ applications, this is the type of application you want to go for. Then we have timeline show. This is the timeline based audio synchronous show part where you can make real laser shows like a classic laser show type. Then we have playlist that allows for playing back created shows. Uh, this is a quite 
powerful feature because Show Editor already comes with 200 or 250 free laser shows. And these you can simply load there and play them back. Uh, so you have a lot of content that already comes with the free software. And then we have software options that allow for configuring the laser output, the laser hardware, the licensing, the, the type, the laser behaves itself. So there's a lot of uh, features built in there. Let's have a look at the software options first, because before we can output anything, we need to make sure that the laser we have connected reacts to the software as it should. So let's open up the software options. As you can see, software options started with hardware. Um, the hardware tab is the uh, most important thing in first hand if you want to configure the general setup of the laser hardware. As you can see, we not, cannot only control one Shownet device, but it could be many Shownet devices. Uh, in this case, it's just one that is connected. It's, it's, a, it's an older model of the Torrent 2 series. Um, and as you see, we have the Shownet with its identifier here, and it's also possible to assign no device or virtual device. In this case, we have hardware, so we assign the hardware properly. We also have the output routing here. So what we can do is we can assign a hardware device to a certain output track. So this is a matrix assignment. So we can kind of matrix assign hardware to content. For us to start as this is a quite advanced feature because you can do a lot of different uh, kind of mix matching of hardware and content. For, for getting started, we just have A, B, C and D checked for hardware one. So we get output on that hardware if we have content on these four tracks. This is a basic setting and I recommend doing that to get started, to get a feeling for the software. Okay, um, before we can do further settings or before we do further settings, I'd like to start with a test picture so you understand what we're actually doing because at the moment we don't see what's happening. We just connected the hardware and we got grip of the hardware and now we want to output something. I save the settings and close window. There is two options. You can close the window, then the settings are preserved just for that session. But as soon as you close the software, the settings will not be preserved. If you save settings and close window, the settings are saved. And if you restart show editor, the settings will be preserved and you can reuse them. So I save settings and close window. Okay, now let's start over with showing some test pictures so we can make adjustments. This is available here. We can select test picture, show test pictures. And it says, please keep in mind that these pictures are meant for Galvo scanner driver tuning only, but this is sufficient for us because we want to do some adjustments with it. So let's select a pattern that allows us for adjusting the size and also color balancing so we understand that we have a proper white afterwards and we can also assign some safety zoning uh, and that's quite good to have some sort of grid. So I just clicked on that and then I select laser on and we get output. I just, you just see it in in the window down here in the corner, you should see it on the camera and it's quite flickering <laughs> due to it being very slow scanning scanner settings. But this is something we will now adjust. We go back to options and in, in the options I can move these, these windows around so they're not, in, uh, not irritating us. We check on optimize output. Optimize output, we see that there is the hardware connected. 
we can also select a different hardware, but in our case, we just want to use hardware one. And here we have the option to adjust the scan speed. And I just speed it up a bit and you see the flickering reduces already in the camera view. And I speed it up to 30K in this case, which is quite fast for the scan angle, but it's okay. And um, then I, I switch to output and I want to reduce the size of the projection so you can see the full projection on the camera in this case. So I select X and Y linked and I can reduce the size of the projection. In this case that's fine so you can see what we're doing on camera and that's quite helpful. So we put that there and um, the flickering you see on the camera is due to the repetition frame rate of the camera. So that's why you see some flickering, but that will not be there when we work uh, further in, uh, with, uh, with the projections in the future. So this is just with a test picture. Let's move on to color correction. The color correction tab gives us the opportunity to adjust the power levels per color. So we can decide to, for example, reduce the blue power to zero. If you reduce it to zero, you see it's just yellow left. But we can also reduce it only partly to get a less bluish projection, for example. And we can also do the same with red. We can also adjust the behavior of the curve. As you can see, we can adjust the behavior of red. So it's not kind of a linear uh, color fading, but it's kind of a, a curved color fading behavior. That is sometimes important, but it's a more advanced feature. Normally you wouldn't need that. Okay, then in the left part of the, of the color correction tab, we have the option to create a so-called audience zone or safety zone, laser safety zone. This is an area where the power is reduced. So the output power gets reduced and uh, you can either completely reduce it to zero. For example, if there is a video projector or a video camera or something like that, that you don't want to hit or you can reduce it to a level that the MPE is preserved in the audience. This is required if you do uh, audience scanning in some, in some countries, it's, it's acceptable in others, not acceptable, but in most countries it's accepted to use that and uh, reduce power. So I just set this and reduce power. And you see in the projection, you see that I can completely cut off parts of the projection by doing that. And I can put a second safety zone like this and you see in the projection that it is completely blacked out. So we have a certain area that is completely blacked out and the other one is reduced. And uh, that is quite helpful depending on the situation you have on site. If you really have to adjust it, this can be uh, set here and you can even adjust it per hardware channel of course so it's not only available for hardware one but you can select hardware two hardware three whatever hardware you want to do and you can do the settings individually per hardware device so I just reset those settings I just put them to 100% so we can continue but just for you to know how to do the safety settings in show editor do you have any questions until here? Do you have any questions you want to pose? Just write them to the chat so I can, I can yeah, reply directly to your questions. Um, we will have a quick look over the other settings now, over the other options. But if you have any questions until now, we can answer them, of course. So I just continue with the different tabs we're having here. So this is the text tab. This is uh, some settings you can do if you want to do text projections because text projections are rather difficult because the lines usually are double lines and it's quite difficult for the scanners to project uh, text because normally it's, it's not that easy to do. You can make some, some settings here, but most settings you can also do when creating the text. 
we have MIDI DMX. What you can do with Show Editor is you can either let a DMX controller like console like Grandma or Avolite's console um, co remote control the software. So you can either use DMX in to remote control the software or you can output DMX from Show Editor to control like, for example, Fog Machine, Haze Machine or something like that. So this is possible both ways. If you want to do that with a built-in laser system, a built-in show net, you need to switch it inside the show net uh, with the admin tool. So you connect with the admin tool to the show net and there you can change from DMX in to DMX out and then you can output. If you use an external ILDA, uh, external uh, interface, external show net with a DMX adapter, then both options are available instantly and you don't have to switch it, you just plug it in and it's available. And this can be set here so the DMX uh, device can be selected if we want to output DMX and also if we want to input DMX, we can set that here as well. But if you want to output DMX, you of course have to set uh, that inside the uh, ShowNet admin tool, otherwise there will be no output because the ShowNet does not output as standard then. Okay, there was a question, I got a question. Flickering is dangerous for laser. No, um, William just mentioned, asked if flickering is dangerous for laser. No, it's not at all. Um, in contrast, it is more dangerous for the laser to get broken if you overscan it. If you do the scan rate way too high, then the motors, they can break. So flickering means normally that it's either slow scanning or it's too many points. So the question is, why does it flicker? If it flickers due to just having low scan speed, like in this case, if we reduce the scan speed and, um, and just go, go down to let's say 5K PPS like, like this, so it's 5K PPS and you see it's flickering a lot. But in this case, the scanners are going very slow. Um, and that's that's not that difficult. But if you get if you go higher with scan speed, um, you must keep in mind that this high scan speed is not always possible in a wide deflection angle. So the higher you go with the scan speed, the more it is necessary to narrow down the projection. So if you make a quality projection, you normally go a bit far away with the laser and make a very small angle and then you can use higher scan speed and it's less flickering. The problem is that the flickering comes from the motors. So in the laser there are two motors, one X and Y motor and they have a small mirror on top. You see them when you look inside the laser from the front. And these motors, they mechanically deflect the laser beam very, very fast. And there is a limitation and the wider you scan, the more you have the inertia effect on the mirrors. So they have to turn very, very long way and that way they have their own weight and the weight of the, of the mirrors make it very hard for the motors to turn it. So if they only have to go a small way, it's much easier for the motors than if they have to go a long way. So uh, the faster you scan, the smaller you should put the angle Otherwise, you can get problems with the scanners and the scanners can die. So this is basically the relation. So it depends on where the flickering comes from. Flickering can also come from too many points. So if you have a very complex logo or very complex text, then of course it's difficult for the, for the mirrors and the motors to, to, to draw all these points because they have to, to really draw every single point. And it's a mechanical deflection. So not like in a video projector where this is with, uh, with a different technology where you can do everything at once. You don't have the flickering anymore nowadays. Uh, but with lasers, it's one, one, uh, one laser beam that is just deflected and that goes everywhere. And that's why it's important to reduce the number of points for every projection as far as possible. Uh, to not have the flickering effect. So if your projection flickers, there is basically two aspects to it. One is the scan speed and the other one is the number of points. So it's always very good if you can reduce the points to the minimum possible points. So um, 
It also depends on the quality of the scanning system, of the laser, but this is something that comes together with the scan speed. And if you have flickering, first thing is reduce the number of points and make sure that the scan speed is at a level the laser can handle and also make sure that you have a small projection angle and that helps to reduce flickering. I hope this, this answered your question, William. I hope this uh, is a sufficient explanation. There is a lot of correlation between, uh, between uh, scanning and also the quality of the laser system and all this and uh, in the end the possibility what the laser can actually do. Okay, there is, there is more setting options we have, for example, show. Um, we can set show settings for the current show, so we can create a show and we can save these settings. This will be uh, interesting later when we do a show. We can reset all settings. If we messed it up with the settings, we can just reset them. And there is the option to identify the license. So in this case, we have a serial number that identifies the license we have. In this case, we decided how to play back a show. We have dark screen. We want to switch monitor to standby. This is what I switch off. I don't want to have that. Um, we can have different options and we can select the language we want to use. This is the way we want to, we can, can select the color. So there is different options. We have a cube and a circle and it depends on what, what variety of colors you can use. But this is, uh, in this case, fine for us. Color circle is sufficient. We have undo files and uh, yeah, and other settings are, are here. Then others too gives us further options. We have a progress bar, just, just some basic settings. Normally you don't have to touch them because they're very special. And uh, then there is one tab we haven't touched yet. This is the default write setting. And this is an important part, especially if you want to export ILDA files. So if you want to create custom content and you want to export them as ILDA file and use them on your ShowNet mainboard because you can load them there and then trigger them later by DMX or run them in automatic mode or sound to light mode. And if you want to store them in there, you need to export them in the correct file format, which is the ILDA format. And this is that setting, the last setting. And I always set them to everybody enabled, but you can also limit it to your dongle number or whatever. I set it to everybody enabled because it's only me on the, working on the computer and the content I want to, I want to export. Normally, um, I just want to be as flexible as possible. So I just leave it everybody enabled, but you can change that later on uh, per, per show and per show folder if you want to. But this is the standard setting and I want to preserve that to not have any problems uh, with the rights when creating content and then trying to export it. Now we did the settings and I save settings and close window. That's important because now the settings are preserved. Also, if the software needs to be rebooted or I want to change things, it's still available. Are there any questions regarding the options from your end? Please write them and I'm happy to answer. Let's move on to the general logics in Show Editor. So what we learned now is the options. How do the options work? What, do we, what can we set in general? Um, but the question is, how does it work? Now, currently we're on the main window. So this is the main window we're working with. And this is where you can quickly and easily create any type of content. So let me just show you how to create content easily. But before that, I want to give you a quick run through about the logics behind how Show Editor stores content and gives permission rights and also kind of bundles together complete shows and content because that is very important to understand. So. Show, as you can see down here, we have some, some sort of file browser. And this is an important part because 
it depends on which folder you open how the content is treated. So the current folder I have opened here contains this content. I can also select a different folder and that contains a different content. Let me just put that here so you see it. So by selecting different folders you can store different content. The problem is that the the rights, the permissions are set per folder as well. So if you have a folder that is protected against export, because there is a file in there that is protected against export, you cannot export as ILDA file. So what I always suggest is make a new folder that you can use here that is bland, brand new and there is no content in there. And then you start from scratch and make your content to that folder. Let me just show you that. Um, we're here, this is in documents and that is the folder I just opened. You have A, A, B, B, B and I just make a new folder called CCC and in my case I just have to reopen that folder and we have CCC inside here. And as you can see, there is no figure saved to that folder and it's, it's blank. So we can, we can use that uh, for our content creation. Let me just rearrange the, the windows I use for doing the tutorial. So we can use more, part, more parts of the screen. You don't need to see me that detailed. Can probably get that there. Try to rearrange it a bit so everybody can see most of the content we're creating now. This is quite good, I think. That's what we put up here. So yeah, I'm just checking. Maybe we can even put that up here. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Let me just rearrange it a bit so we can see a bit more yeah that's quite good i think that's that's a good arrangement okay very good so as i explained these are this is the folder structure and that's the most important part so each folder contains content that belongs to the show or the available content that can be used at this moment for live and timeline, whatever. So if you now would, would change to live or timeline, it would be exactly that content that is inside here that we can use there. So let's start over with doing some basic content and you will see it is very easy and very quick to do that. So I wanna change the grid here so we have a bit more raw grid. So it's not that fine, but I just set 50 as, as a grid resolution, which is easier to work with now in my case, because I just wanna do some, do some uh, square rectangle stuff. So in this case, I just draw a square. And as we see, we have selected color is white in this case and I draw that. So I put laser on and I have the output and you can see it uh, in the camera view what we are actually doing. Now, this is a square, but I wanna not wanna have a square, I wanna have an animation, a nice animation. So this square should be animated. But first of all, I also want to be to color it. So I select the recolor option and I select a color that I want to use. In this case, I want to use blue here and I want to use red here, yellow, and that's fine for me. So I have blue, red, yellow, and white. And you can also see that on the projection. I hope you can see it properly. Yeah, you can see it properly. Okay, as you have seen, I have only colored points. I have not colored a line, I just have colored points. And this is important to understand. The laser software only draws points 
and gives this point a state. So this point gets a color and it gets a direction where the laser should head. So we have a, a, a point like the red point and the red point gets a direction that it needs to go to the left and that's, that's where basically the color is preserved until the next point comes and gets a new color value. So you always color points not lines and that's important to understand but uh, you will see that further and it's uh, pretty simple to understand. So we have a colorful square now. Okay, we want to animate that square but before we do that I just want to save it because I probably want to use it later on as a static one or reuse it in a different way. So I just save that, save as and as you see, it says it, it, it really directs me to the CCC folder I just created and that's selected down here. So I just make, uh, call it one, whatever. It's just, uh, just uh, a name. And you see it's saved up here to the figure table. But you also saw that the laser output stopped. No problem, if you click on it again, in the figure table it starts over again because that is what we selected now. Okay so if we want to put an animation the animation is frame based so it's many frames like in a video where you have many single frames together that just add up as a video we have the same situation with lasers. So what you do is you want to do a new frame in addition to the existing one. But we do not click with a left mouse because if we do a left mouse click we just get a blank new frame. You can switch between the frames using that slider. So this is the original frame and that's the second frame which is blank. And I don't want to start from blank, I just want to use the existing one and reuse it. So I delete that frame again. So we just have one frame. You can also see down here where you are. So there's a lot of statistics down here, but this is something we will have a look later. But now I right click to new frame. You will learn that right click and left click is very important in that software, but also in other software like uh, Show Controller. Um, that's also very important there to use right and left click because it's different and it, it, it works differently. So we have two identical frames. Now, you can even make more copies, but in my case it's sufficient and I just want to use that. So it's one frame and two frame. So you see frame number zero, frame number one. Now we have frame number one and I want to put some animation to it. So in this case I selected this icon, which is the, the hand icon where you can draw stuff. So what I do is I click on that point with the right mouse, right mouse click, right click, and just draw the point to a different position. It's always right mouse click, right mouse click, and I draw it to a different position. So what we have is we have the first frame and we have the second frame. Okay, now let's put an animation to it. Let's call it Morph All. Now we want to put some additional frames in between to make it look nice and make it a smooth animation. Let's put 500 frames in between. So what you see, this extended a lot. So we have a lot of frames and you can also see if I just click there, you see there is an animation going on. Now we want to see the animation and uh, therefore we put frames per second and we put a value there. In this case I put 50. And I save that, save as. This is animated. Then I select it here, you have it up here, and you see the animation going. So you saw it was, was very easy to create that type of animation. It was just like, you know, click, click, and it worked. And what I did, I also made it 
run back and forth. So it's not only one direction and then starting from zero, but it runs back and forth. You could have, st have started with three identical frames and just changed the one in the middle. That would have worked out as well. Okay, what we did is now we have a nice animation and that works out pretty well and looks nice. But we also want the colors to not be like cut off, but be smooth and kind of, you know, with transitions, color transitions and nicely done. And that is also an effect that is pretty easily adapted. We just, just select edit and then we select insert color gradient. You see there is a lot of tools in here that you can use. They have different types of features in there. You can do a lot of things to really create your own content. But in this case, I just want to insert color gradient. And now I can give a value for the distance for soft color. I just use the, the one that is given 500. And now it asks me if I want to put it to all frames or not. And I want to put it to all frames, not only for the current one. I want to put it to all frames. We have 500 frames now and I want to have the color, color fading for all frames. So I say yes. And as you can see now, we have a lot of additional points in there. So you can even see it here in, on the drawing area. We have a lot of additional points, but by having these points, we also have a nice beautiful color transition in our animation. So you see, it is not difficult to do that. It is rather easy and content creation, especially for beam shows, is really, really easy and can be quickly done here. Now the thing is, by having this content created that easily, you can, cre can use that content also with the live window. So if you want to go live like with a, a mobile DJ use or at a wedding reception or something like that, simply assign these content elements you created to keys on your keyboard. So it's basically the keyboard you're using the keys for the live control later. Let's open the live window so I can show you how this is meant. So currently the live window is empty, but you see it looks like the keyboard. So you have the F keys for the different banks, content banks, and you have the normal keys from the keyboard that you can use for playing back the content. And that is super easy, super simple and makes control of lasers very, very easy. But first of all, we need to assign the content to keys because currently there is no content assigned. So what I do is I right click on the content element and say assign figure. And then I just press the key I want to assign it to. In my case, it's Q. I just press Q and it is assigned. You see up here in the, in the content table, there is Q assigned and I assign the next one assign figure, I assign it to W, and the other one I assign to E. Okay, let's open up live window, and as soon as I switch to live window, you see down here the different content elements we just created. So by selecting now Q, W, or E, it plays back the content I just created. I can do that quite quickly. If I press spacebar, it blacks out. And you see if I quickly, quickly hit the keys, it also changes very quickly. And this is basically how you can use the live window for live laser control very easily. And you can use your own content there. You also do not have to assign every content element you created by hand. You can also select that it's automatically uh, assigned. But this is something that is available from, um, from the advanced features. Of course, you can remote control the live window by DMX as well or by MIDI. And this is controlled with these settings here, but this is an advanced feature because it requires some knowledge of DMX and how it works and also MIDI 
and uh, but it's a very powerful feature and you can do that very specifically here and that's uh, quite helpful okay so this is a quick run through how you can create content on here you can also decide as we saved it here uh, to just create basic text sometimes text is an important thing especially for wedding receptions or some other um, other um, occasions um, there is two options to create text the first one is to just click on the text icon click somewhere and then write the text but in this case there is a problem that there is uh, the, the font missing somehow so we do it differently we just uh, use the right click and just set that and it is asked should it more frames automatically in this case yes and we get some output but in this case it's too big we, we just made it way too big just redo it in this case and uh, size it much much smaller and we can then of course also scale it so for the position we need to check with the size and um, font size is 300 that is uh, way too much I just go to 80 percent and that should be sufficient and uh, quality is fine distance is fine so we just try it again with a smaller size and create and here we go with the smaller text you could relocate everything if you like And uh, we just need to get the grid a bit smaller uh, but the thing is that we need to keep in mind that we have many frames so it's a morphed situation in this case and I don't want to have that I just want to have a non non morphed text so I give that text and uh, create that and I don't want to have it morphed so it's only two frames basically can stop the animation now it's uh, three frames and I can also get rid of some of these frames because I don't need them. And then it's super easy to relocate the position. Just kind of drag it, right click, drag it and relocate it in this case. Then you have the text projection. But what you see is it's upside down. Text projection is upside down. Why is it upside down? Because we did not reflect the actual orientation when doing the setup. No problem, we just head back to the settings and there we have the option to mirror Y and X axis. So I mirror Y axis, is that sufficient? No, we also have to mirror X axis. So I save settings and close. And I can recall it up here and it's up right now there is more features we have and this is important to understand because if you do content there is different options for example to create a circle or to create kind of a multi corner shape um, so we create new figure and there is the option to create uh, a hexagon in this case but a hexagon is just six corners but I want to have many corners so I don't I just do 60 and by doing this it looks like a circle right it looks like a circle but it's not act it's actually not a circle it's a multi cornered element so what I do I said and the number of overlapping edges that's fine with uh, 60 and if you see that projection you see that you can see the dots of the projection um, let me recolor that a bit to uh, 
to white. I just mark them all and recolor to white. And you see the dots and we can even adjust that with this wrench. And uh, this adjusts the, the way it is displayed. So we just reduce the scan speed to show you how the different points are created. You see that now much better. You see the points? It's only consistent. You see that the, the hot points in this case. So it's a hot point circle and it's not a, a kind of a smooth circle you would normally uh, expect to happen. So this is the way you can create a hotspot circle. But we can also do the same thing and just use a normal circle. And you see the circle also consists of several points, but it's not a hotspot circle. It's just a plain circle. And that's quite, quite some things you can do with, uh, with a show editor software and a lot of things you can play with. And uh, you have so many options to really get the show going as you want to use it. Do you have any questions regarding the quick run through through the content creation? Anything you want to know, anything you want to specifically see that is not too advanced, of course, because we don't want to do the, the in-depth training today, but the general basic overview. Anything you want to learn, anything you want to uh, experience? Nothing yet, okay. No problem at all. I just continue and give you a further roundup about how to use life. Because what we did now is we created our own content, but there is already a big selection of content that can be used. It's already in there. So you don't have to create your own things. You can just use what comes with the software. And that is quite simple. If you run live window and, uh, and go to file and load default live show, it loads a huge set of preset animations and content that you can instantly use to get going. So if I click that, it just need some loading time and it loads a lot of pre-made content that you can use for your live shows. While it's loading, let me just explain to you the different faders you see up here. There is the option to use any type of fader controller as well. You can use a touch screen with these faders, but you can also use a MIDI controller or a DMX controller to use with these faders. And as you can see, the faders can also be assigned individually. So you can assign certain functions to each fader, depending on what you want to do. You can put uh, rotation, side, compression, Y, intensity, whatever, you can assign that individually to make it match your requirements. And that can also be used then with your controller, like for example, APC mini or APC 40, or whatever type of MIDI controller you want to use or DMX controller, that's completely up to you. But as you can see now, the whole the, the show has loaded, the pre-made show has loaded. You see that the figure table is full of content now. So this is the figure table and also the folder has changed. So you see it's in default live show now. It changed back from our CCC folder to the other folder. And now we have all this content available. So I can, can simply play with my keyboard and select different content and output it to the laser. And it works brilliantly, it looks so good. And we have more content available. If you press the F keys, F2 in this case, you have even more content available and you can instantly use it and output it and make a nice and colorful show without having to create any content yourself. So that is quite nice and super easy to use. And uh, there is more content just stepping through the different content. And um, F4 and uh, F5, you have, have more. F6, there is some, some text and writing there. 
so D-I-S-C-O and whatever you want to use for your shows and uh, also some wedding graphics and stuff you probably want to use uh, as a projection not only for beam show but also for projection so these are projection graphics and even more and even more so there is a lot of pre-made content you can make use of and that's very helpful if you just want to get going you don't want to do own custom content you just use what is in there and that is super cool for the live show there is one one downside with the live show content you cannot export it to ILDA files due to copyright reasons uh, that's for sure but um, if you really want to use DMX control uh, you probably want to create custom content and the show net uh, the main board already comes with a big set of pre-made content already so uh, normally you don't have the need to export these because it's already uh, so much content available for the show net itself do you have any questions regarding live shows anything you want to know no further questions currently just just write them down if you have any i just have an eye on on the chat so if you have any questions i'm happy to answer them yeah let's let's move on to the timeline i just want to give you a quick run through the timeline option how to create content on the timeline uh, timeline is for creating laser shows um based on an audio file that gives us a general kind of an audio situation with a certain timing and we just put content elements to the beat of the music so it looks nicely and people can sit and watch the show so this is basically the idea of a timeline show let's just open the timeline editor as you see we can keep all of these windows open at the same time the timeline editor needs yeah a bit of yeah orientation if you open it for the first time because it probably is not that obvious on first sight how it works um, it basically works like an audio recording studio so what you do is you play back the content and then you press the keys on your keyboard to record the effect you preset on this key uh, this is something that some people are extremely good at and others cannot imagine how it works so it's up to you if you want to to familiarize your that yourself with uh, that um, logics or not but it's helpful to have the live window open because you understand the keys then and I just opened the timeline there and on the timeline you have um, you have the possibility to put content so you always have the figure figure 2 figure 1 figure 0 and then you have different effects you can put to that content above so depending on where the content is you just put the effect above and you can record the effect to the content element so for example if i just i just don't don't put any any audio file in this case but you can can just first of all you normally put an audio file and then uh, save the show and then you get going but in my case i just want to put um, content to show you how it works quickly because it's a special thing so first of all on the live window i select a different bank because i want to use different content and um, yeah i basically hit i basically hit um, record and then I press the key. So in my case, in my case, I just, uh, yeah, that's quite good. Um, no, I don't want to see that. So I just want to record it. And then I press a key and press other keys. And if I want to put blank, I just press the space bar.
stuff. So what you see down here, we recorded some show and we have the content down here. We can use the zoom effect to just see what's happening down here. But in this case, I just want to play it back and see what we just recorded. So in this case, I just press play. And now you see, this is what I just recorded. So it's very quick to record content. And you can also, if you recall, the music is playing. You just set the music before, then the music is playing and you can just get the content to the beat. So the recording principle is rather quick. Um, it's just difficult to modify content after you've recorded it. You can drag and drop content, you can extend it a bit, but it is not that easy. This is some part that we will deal with in the more advanced, the professional session then. Uh, sometime in autumn, fall, you know, probably October, November, we will do a session for advanced users for show editor. And there we will have a closer look at how the timeline feature works and how you can really work with it. There is a lot of professionals out there that work with this type of timeline because they are experts in audio recording and uh, they understand how it works. But if you are more the, um, let's say, drag and drop person, probably you want to upgrade to show controller because show controller offers the drag and drop programming and it's um, a bit more straightforward if you're from the younger generation um, but uh, this is something that some users really prefer over the drag and drop but it's up to you how you work and how you want to create content and how you want to really um, output your shows afterwards so that's also depending on what you want to do. Any questions? Ah, I see. There is, uh, may you tell me the speed of the image there, William asked. Uh, the speed of the image, that's a question. Um, it depends on, the, the, the image itself has no speed, but the the content we're triggering, that has some, some uh, some points, so number of points is relevant, and the scan speed. So scan speed we're using currently is 30 kpps, so that's 30 kpps, but the 30 kpps of course refer to the 8 degrees, so it depends on if you make the, the angle wider, it's, it's a different thing. So it's the 30 kpps, but if we have a look at, uh, let's say, this graphics for example, in the left lower corner, you see the number of points. So the point count is 62 and the visible points are 40. So there is some blank points in between. But if we play that back, you see there is not much flickering. The flickering comes from the effect that is applied. And I take a different, a different type of animation to, to make that clearer. So this has more points, but it's... Uh, Let's, let's have a, I just need to check on a, on a different pattern. So in this case, we have 200 points that are drawn, but it's made in a way that it's not flickering because even as we have the 206 points, uh, it's not flickering because it's running smoothly and you do, do not have the flickering, but it's many frames. So it's not only one frame, but several frames that are running here. And, but it's very smoothly and it's no problem. And it depends if you if you now scale it to very big to full angle it probably flickers a bit more if it stays at a smaller angle it doesn't flicker that much so this is the situation with that here William you're doing more uh, wedding content okay I see that there is quite some wedding content on here uh, but of course this is the pre-made content that is here wedding related stuff so a lot of wedding related content that is on here that can be used um, but of course um, you can create custom content as well if you like so this is not limited to uh, to what uh, to what's uh, what's on here so you can create your custom content as well so a lot of wedding related stuff party related stuff like with a ring whatever so that's quite the, the content thing so the problem is always what type of show you want to do. Do you want to do a beam show that is an aerial effect? So people look towards the laser, so the laser faces people. Or do you want to have a projection show like we have now 
Here we have graphics that are projected towards a wall. That's a completely different way of doing a laser show. So it depends on the setup you have. If you're doing weddings, uh, then probably you have a mixed setup. So you have one laser doing graphics and the other ones just left and right as satellites, for example, doing some aerial beams, doing some additional effects to a, a sound, uh, sound file, whatever. And um, that is quite common for wedding receptions if you do it like that. Of course, uh, it depends on what type of show you want to do. Probably at wedding receptions, if you just do the DJ type, then you probably want to just go for, you know, DMX control or automatic control. But this is not suitable for graphics content. So if you do DMX or automatic control, you better go um, for aerial effects because those are much easier to control with these control options. Whereas if you do graphics, it's highly recommended to always use software, no matter if it's show editor or show controller, the more professional version. Um, it's much more recommended because there you can optimize the output much better than with DMX. With DMX you cannot optimize the output. That's uh, a bit of a problem if it comes to graphics because graphics require quite good settings in the options section. Uh, Marius, Marius asked uh, on 18th July, I want to create a laser show for wedding. I have the CS1000 RGB MK2. After recording the show, how can put the show on stick and load in laser? That's quite a good question. Um, the thing is, to really have the option to play back a show, you have to have a compatible device. So what you need to do that, Marius, you need to have an external show net interface because the, the, the CS1000 RGB, the, the contents that are inside the laser, they are hard stored to the internal mainboard there and they cannot be exchanged. So they are in there and you can just use the content inside. But what you can use is an external show net and there you can load the content to and then you can play it back. This is, it looks like that. I'll just show you one. So this is, this is an external show net device. It's a test device, that's, fun. that's why it's so scratched and stuff. But you have an SD card in here. And on, and on this SD card you can put content on. You can even upload it via LAN. So it's a LAN connection, network connection. And then this goes into the laser and then you can just make it playback. So this one can be triggered with DMX so it can run auto mode or sound or yeah, sound to light doesn't work but auto mode works with this box and you can just plug it in and play it back. But when you have this box you can also directly control it with computer and then output directly to the laser with this ILDA cable. Short ILDA cable and then long network cable to the computer and that's it. But the CS1000 RGB, it does not have the possibility to store content inside. The DS1000 RGB from the diode series, that already comes with all this built in inside the laser. So you have all the content, uh, content possibilities inside the laser and you do not need the external box. So it's all the intelligence inside and you can just get going. You just plug in network and you can use the software for direct output. You can can use DMX and everything. So if you not have the CS, but the DS, you already set and you don't need anything anymore. So it's just pretty easy to get going. I can show you quickly how it works with the DS to upload content. And uh, but this will, we will do that afterwards. I just answer the other questions. Ah, yeah. Okay, Marius, you have this interface. That's quite good. Then I will show you how to do that. Let's move back to the to the folder we just used, and I created that folder. Um, I just need to check the CCC folder. So what we have is we have this animation, okay? And I want to store this animation to the laser and play it back with the laser. So to do so, I have to export it as an ILDA file. So in my case, I save figure as ILDA file. 
I do that and it asks me, do you want it to be optimized on export? Yes, I want to do that. It's really important to do that. And I want to save it here. Now, as it should be played back on the laser, it needs to be in a certain file, a certain file naming convention. So it must be always, it's a three digit, three digit name. And this three digit name is, uh, is the numbers of the, of the position on the DMX channel. So we have the option to put 255. And in my case, I just want to put it as one. So I put it 001.ild. This is the, the name I want to give it. And I save it. Now it asks me which type of ILDA file I want to create. And I always want to create type five to use with Shownet. Shownet uses the latest convention for ILDA file format. If you have a cheap other laser type uh, that is not related to Shownet and is some Chinese made stuff, then it can be that it is number six you need. But normally you need number five. Let's export it. And it's convention five. It's quite complex. That's why it takes some minutes and that's it. Okay. So I have to close show editor or I can make the hardware release when it's not used. Close DAC devices if laser output is off. This is I activate. So I off the laser. I close the software. And then I can use the admin tool, the ShowNet admin tool. You can get it from laser-interface.com and this is the ShowNet admin tool and it automatically detects the hardware we have here. And there is different information. It gives information on the firmware and there is also the SD card. And you can see the SD card already contains a lot of ILDA files. And you see that's quite pre-configured and I can overwrite these files as well. So what I want to do is I want to change the folder to the folder I just created the content in. And you see there is one file in there which is available. It's only possible to load ILDA files to the SD card. Of course, any other file wouldn't make any sense. So what I do is I copy it. Make sure that it's not too big, the file, because it, it's only good for small files for the copy process. Otherwise, there may be problems. So just keep with the small files and do not get irritated. It can get stuck somehow, but it's normally finished quite quickly. But it can take some minutes because it's not optimized for file transfer. And you see, we put the new file on here. So what we can do now, if you have the latest firmware on your ShowNet device, and that's important, you can check on this is the latest firmware you have. It's from January, January 2021. And you can also get it from laser-interface.com. Um, if you have the latest firmware and you have the admin tool version 1.39, then you can use the setup mode to output stuff. And as you see, it's animation number one, because we saved it as 001. And it plays back. We just uploaded it and it plays back. Of course, it's flickering now because this mode, this is just for testing. So it flashes and that's quite as it should be. But you see, we uploaded it and it works. It's up here. So it's pretty simple. So we just created content. We saved it and we uploaded it to our laser and we can just play it back. You can also do that in automatic mode. You can switch the laser to automatic mode and then you play it back in automatic mode or uh, trigger it with DMX. On DMX, you would just have it on, on channel two. You would have it uh, on value one. And that's it. So very, very easy to do and very simple and it works pretty well. By the way, I just mentioned before that uh, you can switch the DMX mode from signal into signal out if you have an internal main board and this is where you can do it. But there it will be a more in-depth training on how the Shonen admin tool works 
uh, I think it's next week. Okay, do you have any further questions? Anything you want to know? Anything specific? Marius, did this, did this answer your question regarding how to put it on the, on the laser? I just show you one other thing now. It says the dongle has been removed and it gets up with this window. Now this window shows that Shoeda is running in freeware mode. Um, in this case, the hardware has not been detected. And you can start show it show editor without hardware and without license and you can still create uh, ILDA files and content so this is no limitation you can also retry to find the shownet interface or you can start a firewall patch script because in most cases it's the firewall blocking the shownet if there is any problem but in our case it's something else because we still have the shownet admin tool open and only one device uh, can access the hardware at once. So as the Shonet admin tool has the connection to the Shonet open, the show editor cannot do it. So what we do now is we just close the Shonet admin tool, retry to find Shonet interface and it will detect the Shonet interface now because it's not blocked by, uh, by, the, uh, by the admin tool anymore. We'll start up in a second. There are many more features in Show Editor. Show Editor is a very, very powerful software, but it depends on what you want to do. And um, there is a lot of these features are quite advanced and you really need to yeah, understand how things work. I just want to show you one thing that we haven't talked about yet. And this is the effects window. There is the option to put automated effects and animations to content you create here without doing the type of animation we did before. Before we had the morphing and all this. And this is one way of creating animations. But you can also use just static content and put animations on here and make that kind of um, kind of modify the, the, uh, the, the content you have. Uh, but you need to understand that using that does not affect any export to ILDA. And that is very important because if, if you would use that um, for export on ILDA, it would just export the static frame, not the animation you created here. And that's very important because um, otherwise you would probably be irritated why it's the case uh, that uh, it's not uh, exported properly. So what you see is um, on the output, on the preview is different than the output. We can change stuff on here. and the animation goes. It's independent of the content you actually created. It's an additional layer of effects. So it's not, it does not apply to any export to ILDA. So if you want to export animations to ILDA, you have to do it the way we did before. But this is something you can use for your shows, for timeline shows and something like that. That is quite helpful and um, yeah, you can create nice stuff. It's, it's really nice. I, I really like it uh, because you see it's, it's super simple to create some sort of animation 
and uh, that, that is not based on frames but on, on just an effects generator. And uh, if you just want to use it for live shows, for timeline shows, this is a very, very good option to get that going. I just put that to... So you can do some crazy stuff with that. And uh, depending on the settings, this is quite, it's, it's quite crazy. Also color transitions and all that stuff. So just have a play with that. It's, it's a nice feature and uh, probably gives you some additional possibilities when creating content and shows. Okay. Are there any further questions from your end for the show editor basic training or are you happy with what we've dealt with today? Any further questions? If there are no further questions, I just want to say thank you for joining in. And I hope it was interesting to you. And uh, as I said before, we probably schedule some advanced training in October or November, where we'll dive a bit deeper into timeline editor, probably also some DMX features, because we can also DMX output with show editor, and uh, also some advanced features for content creation, like you know drawing effects and some other frame effects we, we can create with show editor. But this is something that's more for the advanced session. If you like to, you can of course experience it yourself and just dig into it and play with it and learn it. Um, but we'll explain that in the advanced session more in detail then. Yeah, thank you very much for joining and, and tuning in and then probably see you next time. And uh, yeah, probably interesting to you just as a final idea for you to, if you want to, Look a bit ahead, show controller, that is the next level of software. So if you wanna go for the more professional software, this is what you can look into. And it works with the same hardware, so it's just a license you get, just a small USB dongle, and you don't have to have any additional hardware, just the license, and you get a completely different software that works a bit different, but it's more powerful in terms of video integration, timeline programming, it's a bit more versatile. And uh, that's something, if you want to look into that, that might be an option uh, just as an upgrade. But of course, if you just want to get started with show editor, you can do so many things that you normally don't have to do the super advanced software for it. So this is what you get with live on show controller which is the other software just to give you a heads up what's available out there there is even more than what you get with show editor okay then everybody thank you very much for joining and uh, see you cheers bye